Coach Dykes was kind enough to ask me to talk to you today because tomorrow's game, as you know, is the 39th annual Joe Roth Memorial Game. So I think a couple of things I've thought about, what, is, what message can I convey to all of you about who Joe was? And uh, three words come to mind. And uh, first is courage. And Joe, um, I'm gonna take my glasses off, I'm getting way too old. Joe was diagnosed with a malignant melanoma skin cancer a bothersome mold that was removed from his face during the first year of junior college. Uh, he lost his starting quarterback position at Grossmont uh, because of his major recovery period, but he was able to overcome the major physical setback, but never giving up. He earned his starting quarterback position back, and Joe led Grossmont College in 1974 to the uh, undefeated season, by the way, and to the state uh, championship for junior college uh, back in 1974. And he was also a consensus JC All-American. It's pretty impressive to do that when you're facing, facing uh, death, the, right, looking at death. And then uh, Joe was recruited by Coach Mike White, a good friend of mine. And Joe transferred to Cal, and then he was told that he would be a second string quarterback I don't know if you guys remember, uh, way too young, but Fred Bassana, who had a, a very big career in the NFL. And so they started off in 1975, one and two. So Coach White felt it was time to bring Joe into the game. And um, Joe uh, basically went eight and one for the rest of the season. So it was <coughs> coming out of nowhere. It was, as a roommate, it was so much fun because he, he liked football, but he wanted to have life beyond football. And so it was just fun to see this meteoric uh, rise to being consensus All-American uh, after the 95 season. And then uh, one of the things too, I should also mention his leadership, is that uh, when Joe took over the team, uh, first order of business, he called a team meeting. And the players would say, well, Joe, we, we would if we could win, because but he said, well, we will and we must win. So he was a real leader in all ways. Um, so again, his only loss in his junior year was against UCLA, and as a result of that one loss, Cal finished, uh, well he finished 8-1, but uh, UCLA had uh, beaten Cal that year, even though they were Pac-8 co-champions. UCLA got to go to the Rose Bowl. So you guys have an opportunity when you're out there thinking about Joe Roth, and thinking about the game, if you can take it a little notch up than you normally do, because uh, Keep in mind that Joe had cancer, melanoma, not once but twice. He was able to, you know, he was just able to take the hits. And I did come home bruised and been sitting in the jacuzzi. And I said, Joe, how in the heck can you take those hits game after game after game? And he goes, you know, this is nothing when you face, face death and with his cancer. So he really had his, he really had his act together. So then in, uh, there was a, so he was one of the top three Heisman Trophy candidates going into 1976, along with Tony Dorsett, which I'm sure all of you are aware of him, and Ricky Bell, who was a close friend of mine at USC. So he faltered in his senior year, but due to his prowess and courage, he was selected the West team starting quarterback for the Shriner East West game, uh, which he couldn't play because he was, by this time, he was in pretty bad shape with his back, and the cancer was starting to take over. He, then we went on to the Hula Bowl in Hawaii, and he was basically selected as a starting quarterback for the West team in uh, the Hula Bowl, the Shriners game, and then we went on to Japan against the best of the best. In fact, uh, in uh, Hawaii and, and Japan, Tony D uh, Dungy was the opposing um, quarterback for the, for the East team. So it was really an opportunity to get to know some caliber people to this day or uh, Hall of Famers. So before we left to go to Hawaii, Joe had a double dose of uh, chemo. So his doctor, Dr. Michael Friedman, great guy, he uh, loaded him up and, uh, and then he had a day to just kind of relax, try to relax because he would throw up with his, the chemo. It's so much better now treating malignant melanoma. Anyway, so he was throwing up, and 
we got him on the plane, uh, <coughs> went off to Hawaii, and there was everybody by then, there's only three people that knew that he had this condition that was fatal. He had weeks to months to live. It was Mike White, Coach White, uh, obviously his brothers, and myself. And so in Hawaii, everybody was dogging him from the press all over and finally gave an exclusive to um, Skip Bayless, uh, who was at the LA Times at the time. And it was just a tremendous relief to him to be able to you know, get that off his, off his back. So then he went on to Japan, and Japan, they didn't really know that much about his cancer, but he, if Coach White said, look, do you want to just sit on the sidelines? You know, that's fine. He said, no, I want to play. So he played um, he, for about a quarter and a half. He threw five out of six uh, passes for over 100 yards <coughs> against the best of the best. And he would stay out in the back there because he's well known in Japan. And he would sign autographs for two hours before we would go back to our hotel room. I mean, it was just the person he was. And which leads me to the second word <coughs> of who he was is his attitude. He had an enormous, enormous amount of positive mental attitude. An example of this is when Cal played Georgia Bulldogs in a hot, humid conditions in the South. Late in the game, Joe was sacked <coughs> for a loss. Second down was incomplete, facing third and long from his 12-yard line. Joe threw a bomb to the outstanding uh, wide receiver uh, and also had a successful NFL career, uh, Wesley Walker. And that that record stood as the longest pass in Cal history uh, up until I think three or four years ago. Um, the third word that I'd like to honor Joe is his legacy. And did you know that in Joe's number 12 jersey, who you've seen the locker and, and I just saw it up here at uh, his uniform, is the first officially retired football jersey in 130 years of Cal football. So um, I was just telling Coach that you know, there's this major motion picture. I'm sure all of you saw the documentary, by the way. It was really well done. I just chose not to participate in it because um, my, my hat was with the full story of who Joe Roth was. And uh, it's called The Bravest Bear. It's a title. It's a script that uh, has been written. The screenwriter approached me. We collaborated. And you got all the people you saw in the documentary as well to put the input. And so now it's sitting with uh, Imagine Entertainment, which is Brian Grazier, and I'm sure you've heard of Ron Howard. So uh, I'm sitting with the production manager. So it may be three or four years, but I'm hoping at some point in my lifetime, the story, not only here in the United States, but Japan is still revered. So, uh, you know, it was amazing. So Joe lived more of life in the two years uh, that he and I uh, were roommates, and that lived more than uh, those two years than most people do in a lifetime. I was blessed to have the opportunity to live with him. Uh, Mike White, uh, his coach, and Joe were inducted to the Cal Hall of Fame in 2000. Tomorrow is, as I mentioned, the 39th annual Joe Roth Memorial Game. And I would ask each and every one of you that as you suit up in the locker room for the UCLA game, that you take a moment to reflect on what I said. letters of those three words, courage, attitude, legacy. <coughs> What's the first letter of each of those? What does that spell? Cal. Cal. So uh, having said that, Cal, with Cal spirit, and you guys, I know you can do it tomorrow. Just think of Joe when he would pick himself off the ground, and he, and he died a month, less than a month later after the expandable. I appreciate the opportunity to be here today. And if any of you ever have any questions, Dennis knows how to get old. I'd be happy to share any stories. Thank you for your time today.